Hello everybody, welcome to my first CSS challenge video. In this video, I'm going to be going over my thought process as I code this button over here on the right, which is a rotating 3D button. So as you can see, when you hover over it, it'll show the top face of the button, and when you hover off of it, it'll go back to showing the front face. It'll be smooth no matter how quickly you go on or off of the button, and it'll always work. So if you guys do enjoy this video, please let me know down below in the comments by either leaving a comment or liking this video, because if this video does get enough support, I'd love to make this into a full-time series where you guys leave suggestions for what challenges I should complete, and then I show you guys me completing these challenges and how I think about it and how I go through it. So let's get started by creating this over here. I'm going to, I have my project set up on the left here. I'm just going to open it up with live server. There we go. And I have two style sheets linked here in my main index page. One is just a background style CSS page which is just for setting this background color and positioning my button in the center of the screen. None of this is actually important for the button itself, so I have it separated. And then I have another style sheet here, my styles.css, and this is going to be where we put all the code for the actual button. So let's get started with this actual button. The first thing that we want to do is create the HTML for our button. So many of you may think that what we should do is create a button here, and then inside of it we would put our two different faces for hover me and surprise, but button elements do not allow you to put block-sized elements inside of them. You're only allowed to use inline elements. And for our project, we need to use block elements in order to get these elements positioned correctly. So instead of using a button, we're going to use a div here instead, since divs allow us to use inline and block elements inside of them. The next thing we need to do is we need to include our two different texts that we have. So we'll include these inside of divs as well. Our first text, which is on the front, it's going to be hover me. And then our second text, which is going to be another div inside of our button div, is going to be the text surprise. And there we go. Now we see that we have our front face and our top face of our button over here. And then all we need to do is add some classes to these divs so that we know how to distinguish them. We'll give this class of button, since it's going to be the wrapper around our button. And then our front face here, this is going to have the class of side, since it's the side of our button. And then it'll have another class of default side, since this will be the default side that we want to show when we load the page. Then lastly, our surprise side is going to have a class of side, and then another class of hover side, since this is the side we want to show when we hover. And with these five classes that we have set up on our different divs here, we're going to be able to style all the styles that we need to in a way that makes sense because they're named by classes. So that way, when we go into our style sheet, we can share some of these classes such as side between these two sides and then do specific things on the default and hover side. So now let's go into our styles.css and start coding this up. The very first thing that I like to do with almost any project I do is use the everything selector and set the box sizing to be border box because this will make sizing our elements much easier since border box makes the width include padding and the border inside of the width of the object instead of adding it onto the width. Then what I like to do when tackling these challenges is to first design the layout and the sizing and coloring of the object, and then tackle the specifics of whatever the challenge is. So in this case, the specifics would be the 3D rotation of the box. So all rotations and 3D related elements I'll do after designing the layout and sizing of the elements. So first, what I wanna do is I wanna design the size of the button itself. To do that, we'll take our button class and start applying styles to this. We know that we want this to be a block level element, which is perfect because we used a div, so we don't even need to specify display block in here since divs are already display block. What we do want to do though is give it a height and a width since we want our top and bottom face to be both the exact same size in our button. So we'll set a height here of let's just do 150 pixels and then we'll do a width and we'll make the width 450 pixels. There we go, if we save that we see that our button has grown a little bit and that's really all we need to do for the button for now. So now let's move on to the different sides of our button. The first thing we need to do is use the selector for our side class here in order to select both of the different sides of our button to style. And what we want to do is we want to make these sides fill the entire space that our button has. So we'll use a width of 100% here so that our width will be the entirety of our button and a height of 100%. So our height will also fill all the space available. But you'll notice that these actually space out from each other and we want them to overlap so that we can easily position them later. 
because we'll use position absolute here in order to position them absolutely from each other. So that way they'll be absolutely positioned inside of the nearest relatively positioned object. And since we want them relative to our button, we must use position relative on our button so that they are inside of our button. Next, we want to position them centered in our button. And an easy way to do that is to use Flexbox. So we'll just do display flex here, use justify content center and align items center to position it in the center horizontally and vertically. And as you can see, it's now being in the, positioned in the center of our button right here. And the next thing we need to do is increase our font size a little bit since it's very small. So we'll change our font size here to be 4EM and we'll change our font weight here to be bold. Now, if we say that, you see that our text is much larger and overlapped as we want it to be. The next thing to do is style the specific sides of our buttons. So we'll use our default side selector here in order to style the default side of our button. There we go. And we just want to make the background color to be white. There we go. We need a border around it. So this border, we're going to make it 10 pixels wide. It's going to be solid colored border. And we're going to make it this blue color, which is denoted by this hex color value. And if we save that, you'll see that our front value of our side looks really good right now. The last thing we need to do is make the color of the text the same as the border. So we put that in there and save that and that's perfect. Now in order to style our top side face, let's just go into our index page here and comment out our front view so that we can easily see our top view while we're styling it. And we'll use hover side here to select that. And now we wanna make the color on this going to be white since our background is going to be that blue color. So we make the color white here and then we make the background color. Whoops, background color. There we go. We're going to make that that bluish color here. There we go. That's the top face of our button already done. And we didn't need to do any border on this because in our example, there was no border on the top face. So now we can go back in here and uncomment out our hover me button. And if we save that, we'll now have the surprise button on top and the hover me button right behind it. Now we need to do is work on the actual rotation and 3D elements of this design. The first thing we need to do is add a perspective to our CSS. This is because when working in three dimensions, you need to tell the browser what perspective the user is from. So if we go up to the top here, we'll select our body element and we'll use the perspective selector perspective and we'll set it to 800 pixels. Essentially what this selector is doing is saying we want to assume that the user is 800 pixels away from this object essentially. So it'll give it depth to our object as if the user was 800 pixels away. If there is no perspective, if this was zero for example, we're assuming that there is no distance between the viewer and the object so there is no depth. So when we rotate the button it wouldn't show the corners and the sides. This is why we need to use an 800 pixel perspective, which will put our viewer far enough away that we can see the edges and corners of our button as it rotates. The next thing we need to do is take this top face here and we need to rotate it so that it's going to be on the top of our button instead of in the front. To do that, we just go down to that side that is specifically for this and we use the transform selector, which allows us to translate, rotate, and move our objects in ways other than just styling them with the widths and heights. So in here, we're going to use rotate and we want to rotate on the X axis. So we do rotate X and we'll give it 90 degrees as our value to rotate since we want it to rotate 90 degrees above our other button. And if we save that, you'll see that now it has completely disappeared. That's because it has rotated up so that it is right along the top of this and it is invisible almost because it is so thin. If we change this, for example, to 45 degrees and saved it, you'll see that it is partially rotated up. If we go to 65, it's even more rotated. And once we go all the way to 90 degrees, it's completely horizontal. And since it has no depth, it just completely disappears, which is exactly what we want for this project. The next thing that we need to do is we need to go to our button class in order to style our rotation for when we hover over the button, because right now hovering over it does absolutely nothing. So let's go to our button. Here. We'll add a selector for hover, and when we hover over it, we want the transform to be rotated on the x-axis by negative 90 degrees, 
which will make it so that our top face will become apparent and the bottom face will go, the front face will go away. So if we save that and hover, right now it's just glitching out. This is because we're not doing a 3D transformation. In order to do that, we need to change our transform style of our button, transform style here, to be preserve 3D. And now if we save that and hover, you see that our top face becomes viewed when we hover, and when we unhover, our front face is viewed. This is perfect, but you see that there's no transition period between the two, it just immediately switches between them. In order to change this, we're going to add a transition property to our button, which will allow us to add timing between our transitions. So the first property here is what attribute you want to transform. For us, we want the transform attribute to have a transition period to it. The second property is how long we want it to take. In our case, we'll use 300 milliseconds since it's slow enough that you can see it, but fast enough that it feels quick to the user. And then the last attribute is what type of curve you want the speed of the animation to take. So we'll use ease in, out, which means that it'll go slow at the beginning, faster in the middle, and then slow at the end again. So if we save that and hover over our button, you'll see that it rotates now, and you have a little bit of transition period between when the front face is shown and the top face is shown, and same when you unrotate it. But you'll notice that our buttons are currently inside of each other when they rotate, and we want the top face to come from the top instead of from the center. In order to change this, we need to translate our button away from each other. So if we go down to our default side here, we'll use our transform property again, and we'll translate, and we're going to translate on the Z axis, since the Z axis is what comes out of the computer. For example, a positive Z axis would bring an element closer to you, and a negative Z axis would bring it further away from you in 3D. So we're going to translate by half of the height of our button, since right now it's in the dead center, and we want to move it half of the height towards us. So we'll just use 75 pixels here to bring the button 75 pixels closer to us. Now if we save that, you'll see the button has gotten a little closer, a little blurrier, and you see that it is right on the bottom of our surprise element, which is exactly what we want, but we also need to translate this surprise element here. So we'll just go down here. In our transform property, we can just add another translate here, translate on the Z axis, and we'll again do 75 pixels. Save that, and now you'll see that our top face is actually coming from the top of our button. This is exactly what we want, but you may be a bit confused why we translated on the Z axis for both of them, because if we translate on the Z for the hover side, shouldn't that bring it closer to us instead of bringing it higher up? And this is because when we rotated the object on the X axis, it actually rotated the entire axis of the element, so instead of the Z axis pointing towards the screen, it's actually pointing up and down. If this is a bit confusing, it'll become more apparent because we're going to do a similar transformation on the button element in a little bit here. One thing I want you guys to notice though, is if we remove the background color of our hover side for now and hover, you'll see that we can see our front face from behind, which we don't want to happen. What we want to use is a property called back face visibility. So we set this here, back face visibility, and we want to set this to hidden so that the back faces of our elements will be hidden. So now if we hover over our button, you see that as soon as we are able to view the back of the button, it completely disappears, which is exactly what we want. Now we can add that background color back in, save it, and our button will work as before. One thing you may notice though, is when we translated the button closer to us, it got a little bit blurry, the text kind of got blurred, and we want to remove that. So what we're going to do is translate the actual button element itself back 75 pixels again, to essentially remove the blur from bringing it closer to us. So in our button here, let's do transform, and we're going to translate on the Z axis, and we're going to go negative 75 pixels to bring that button 75 pixels farther away from us. And if we save that, you now see that our text is crisp and our button rotates again, but you'll notice that it doesn't actually rotate the same as before. It now brings the button closer to us when it rotates, as you can see, the top face is larger than the front face. And this is because our transform right here where we rotate on the x-axis, this translate z now is translating not in the back and forth direction, but in the up and down direction, which is translating our button up and down as opposed to towards us and away from us. In order to fix this, we need to add another translate here where we're going to translate on the y-axis. 
and we want to translate 75 pixels on the Y axis since when the button is rotated, the Y axis is now facing towards us and translating 75 pixels on the Y axis will push the button 75 pixels away from us. So if we save that here and we rotate, we now see that our, front, our top face does not get larger when we rotate. And now this is the completely finished button here. It really didn't take very much code to create this and about 90% of the code here is really just to style the actual text color, background colors, and borders of the button. And only a few of these transform lines are the actual rotation code that we needed to make this button rotate when we hover over it. So hopefully you guys are able to follow along my thought process here, where first I designed the size of our elements with the button here, the size of our side, as well as the position of our text. And then I went about and styled the actual coloring of our element with background colors, borders, and colors. So that way I knew what I was working with, with color and design, before I ended up adding the actual implementation of transforming and rotating these buttons so that it worked with the rotate on hover. So thank you guys very much for watching this video. If you guys enjoyed it, please leave a comment down below and a like, and let me know what CSS challenges you want me to complete in the future, because I would love to continue to do these if you guys enjoy it. Thank you very much.